Being able to create a space that not only organizes learning for students, but also provides a place for teachers to interact with students during learning is something that every teacher wants and needs. Having spent time in previous modules, you now know that you are successfully able to create a learning progression, use formative to gather data about where students fall on progressions, and collect live results. This makes you ready to create that desperately needed and wanted collaborative learning space that students can use to work together to learn from their peers and you. The digital tools that we have here at WCPS to create learning experiences are vast. However, there are only two tools that I would suggest to use in order to create a space where students can collaborate and work on a truly tailor-made learning experience. Those two tools are SmartAmp and Google Classroom. In the previous module, we discussed how to use SmartAmp to organize learning, but today, during this module, we are going to explore how to use Google Classroom to accomplish the same thing. If you would like to follow along with me to construct your learning experiences, feel free to do so. Please pause this video and take a minute to find the learning progression that you created. Let's begin with collecting the data that we gathered from the previous module. Looking at your learning progression data, create groups of students for each level of progression. Take a minute to pause this video in order to do that. As you are beginning to build your experiences, reflect on two questions. What skills do students need to learn to move forward from the current learning level to the next level? And what are the learning preferences for the students within your class? Taking into consideration the answers to both of the previous questions, you will need to construct a learning experience that allows students to explore topics, ask questions, hold discussions, and receive feedback on their learning. But the focus of this module is not necessarily about how to construct those experiences, but instead what digital tools are available that support exploration, collaboration, discussion, and feedback, and how to use those tools effectively. So let's take a look into Google Classroom. Classroom offers teachers the ability to set up a class, invite students and co-teachers to hold discussions, post assignments, and other announcements. In the class stream, they are able to then share information quickly and manage assignments all in one place. Students can see assignments on the work page and in the main class stream or on the calendar. Students are also able to share resources with each other and interact in the class stream or by email. So what separates Google Classroom from SmartAmp? Classroom is a great place to house and grade assignments, manage work, and start a discussion. SmartAmp is a fantastic place for students to do the work, a place where you can see what they are thinking about during their learning. Together, they create a dynamite platform for collaborative learning and really allows you to see the learning that is occurring. So let's dive into Classroom. First, to begin, please log into a Google Classroom that you've already created. If you haven't created a classroom before, please take a moment to access the WCPS online modules that focus on Google Classroom. These modules will show you how to create a classroom and get your students logged in. Now that we are logged into Google Classroom, our goal for today is to use Classroom to create four different learning experiences one that represents each level of our learning progression. To begin, we are going to use the Assignment tab. Here, I am able to assign specific assignments for students or groups of students. The Assignment tab is located in the bottom right corner by selecting the plus sign. I then want to create an assignment, so I'm going to click on as Create an Assignment. Take a minute to pause this video to locate the assign assignment button and arrive at this brown box. Now that you have the assignment box open, you're ready to add the details about your assignment. First, select the classrooms or the classroom that you would like this assignment to be assigned. Next, select whether or not you would like all students to receive this assignment, individual students to receive it, or groups of students. Make sure that when you title your assignment, it is detailed and easy for students to locate and find. And make sure that your instructions are detailed and specific so that students know exactly what you are expecting. 
you have the option to assign a due date as well as a topic. A topic is just another word for a tag in a classroom so that when students and teachers have multiple assignments and announcements and discussion questions, they are easily able to um, click on the topic, which is on the left-hand side, and um, find that particular topic in which they're discussing. If you would like to put resources on here for students to use while they are completing the assignment, you can upload a file from your desktop, you can upload a file from Google Drive, you can embed a YouTube video or add a link. You also have the opportunity to assign a question immediately, which means it will post to the stream as soon as you click assign, or you can assign it at a later date. So take a minute to pause this video and create an assignment for the level one progression. Now that you have created an assignment for one of the progressions in your learning progression, repeat the steps that you just completed to create an assignment for the remaining progressions. I'm sure as you noticed, when you finished each assignment, it would post on the stream. As you post an assignment or a discussion or a question, it will end up in your stream. In order for you to check what each student has posted, you simply click on the Done button. This will list all of the students' responses in addition to a grade option where you can give them a grade for the assignment that they have submitted, or if you would like to provide them feedback, you are able to reply individually to them. The second part to organizing learning using Google Classroom is collaboration. Sometimes we just want to have a discussion with students. Using the Create a Question tool, I'm able to pose a question where students are able to respond not only to me, but each other. In order to access the Create Question tool, you go to the same place where you accessed the assignment tool. You select the, pl the plus sign and then create a question. This box appears, which looks almost identical to what the assignment question was. You complete the information by selecting the classroom you would like to answer the question, the students that you would like to have answer the question, and then you can post the question yourself. If that question has any specific details, make sure to include it, as well as the due date and the tag or the topic. You can select it to be a short answer question or a multiple choice question, and if you would like students to respond to each other, then please make sure that this is turned on. If you would like students to be able to go back and edit their answer, make sure this is turned on. If you would like to provide resources for students to use to answer the question, you can upload a file from your computer, upload a file from your Google Drive, insert a YouTube video, or a web link to an outside website. Again, you can always ask the question immediately or schedule a time to ask the question. Take a minute to pause this video and create a question on your Google Classroom. As you can see, Google Classroom is a great tool that allows students to collaborate and learn together. But it also serves as a fantastic teacher tool which gives you the opportunity to organize learning for all students in one space. You are able to provide individualized learning based on different learning progressions and where students fall on them. You are able to give students specific discussion questions and assignments, provide them feedback, and graded work. In the previous module, we discussed how to use SmartAmp to do something similar. Either tool that you select to organize student learning is one that will support them in a way that allows for collaboration, exploration, feedback, and reflection.